This week has been filled with big updates in spaceflight, with SpaceX once again at the center of attention. For months, the company has been pushing through rapid testing, rolling out new hardware, and preparing for its next big launches. Each step brings them closer to making Starship the fully reusable vehicle they have been promising. The buildup has been intense. And now, the latest changes hint at the biggest leap forward yet. To understand the scale of progress, it helps to look at how the last few weeks have gone. Ship 37, one of the most recent prototypes, has wrapped up its major tests. From fueling checks to engine demonstrations, the vehicle has proven it is ready to move on to its final stage before flight. Alongside that, its partner booster has been finishing construction inside the huge factory bays at Starbase. After Flight 9 earlier this year, many wondered how quickly SpaceX could bounce back. The answer is now clear, faster than most expected. Flight 10 is the next big milestone and preparations are nearly complete. Recent testing included a spin prime procedure where engines are spun up and filled with propellant without ignition, confirming the fuel systems are stable and ready for a real burn. The first attempt had to be stopped when a cryogenic hose developed a leak, but SpaceX engineers replaced the faulty part immediately and resumed work the following day. The second attempt went perfectly. With that, the team avoided major delays and showed how quickly issues can be solved. Ship 37 is now being readied for its final inspections and will soon be paired with its booster for launch. All this steady testing is laying the groundwork for a much bigger reveal. For the first time, SpaceX has shown off a brand new component of its upcoming Starship 5-3 system, and the upgrade is one of the most dramatic changes to the rocket so far. While V3 has been mentioned many times by Elon Musk, details about what it would actually look like have been scarce. We now know the first confirmed improvement, a completely redesigned grid fin system for the massive super heavy booster. Grid fins are the large waffle-like structures mounted near the top of the booster. They play a critical role during descent, steering the rocket back to its landing zone after stage separation. In past designs, SpaceX used four smaller, square-shaped fins. But with V3, everything changes. The fins have been reshaped, resized, and reinforced to serve not just as control surfaces, but also as part of the new catching system. In short, they now do two jobs instead of one. Photos shared by SpaceX confirm that the V3 fins are 50% larger than the old ones. Musk himself joked about them looking like giant waffles, and that description is not far from reality. Their new octagonal shape makes them stand out instantly compared to earlier boosters. But size alone isn't the only difference. These fins are much heavier, weighing in at around three tons each. That extra mass is the result of stronger materials and the addition of new catching hardware. For the first time, the same structure that guides the booster back will also be used to secure it, when the tower arms grab hold during landing. The catching mechanism is simple but powerful. Each of the side fins now includes a pin-shaped extension that sticks out from the main body. This pin is designed to slot into the rails on the Mechazilla tower arms, locking the booster in place as it comes down. By merging the fins with the catching system, SpaceX eliminates the need for separate hardware, cutting down on weight in other areas. The central fin, however, will not carry a catch point, leaving that task to the two symmetrical side fins. The fins on the new booster have been relocated lower on the structure. This positioning brings them into direct alignment with the launch tower arms, making the process of catching and recovering the booster more precise. In older designs, the fins were placed higher to avoid the blast and heat from the engines during stage separation. The change shows that SpaceX is now optimizing around recovery operations, where the tower plays a central role instead of only focusing on separation events. This redesign also means the actuators and control systems for the fins sit closer to the rocket's cryogenic propellant tanks. That location exposes them to very low temperatures, so engineers must add protection to prevent freezing or damage. Although this adds complexity, it is a manageable engineering step and does not appear to limit performance. SpaceX has experience in insulating and shielding sensitive parts from extreme conditions, 
so this adjustment fits within its current technical abilities. Booster 18 will be the first vehicle to fly with the new fin design and hot staging ring. Before launch, it will go through a series of cryogenic trials to confirm the system's work under real conditions. The design also cuts the total fin count from four down to three, but each fin is larger to provide the needed aerodynamic stability. Removing landing legs entirely and depending only on tower arms for recovery is another part of this strategy. Together, these changes bring SpaceX closer to rapid reuse of Starship boosters, cutting down turnaround times and increasing efficiency for future launches. While B-18 leads the way, other hardware is not far behind. Booster 19's first sections have already been spotted at the build site, showing how production is overlapping to maintain pace. Nose cones for ships 39 and 40 are also in progress, featuring their own updates for the V3 generation. Taken together, these parts suggest that multiple V3 pairs will be ready by the end of the year. If SpaceX can get Booster 18 and Ship 39 stacked and tested quickly, the first full V3 flight could happen within months. Beyond that, the company could push for even more launches before the year closes. Some estimates point to as many as six total Starship flights in 2025. For context, that would be the most Starship launches ever achieved in a single year, doubling down on the progress made in 2024. Flight 10, however, remains the immediate focus. The hardware is nearly ready, inspections are underway, and the launch window is open. If the schedule holds, we could see liftoff before the end of August. That would mark exactly three months since Flight 9, showing SpaceX's growing ability to stick to a rapid testing cadence. Following Flight 10, Flight 11 could come as early as September, with Ship 38 and Booster 17 already moving through their own test sequences. The possibility of back-to-back -back monthly flights would show how far the program has come since setbacks earlier this year. After Ship 36's failure, many doubted SpaceX could recover so quickly. Now, with new hardware lined up and V3 upgrades entering the picture, the company has bounced back but also raised the bar. Achieving a new turnaround record between flights could set the stage for an even faster pace in 2026. Of course, SpaceX isn't the only company in the spotlight. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, a long-awaited space plane designed to deliver cargo to orbit, has also faced attention. Originally expected to debut this year, the program has encountered more delays. Its first flight may not take place until sometime after 2025, pushing back plans that many had hoped would bring fresh competition to the space industry. While SpaceX races ahead with hardware after hardware, Dream Chaser's timeline shows how difficult it is to bring a new spacecraft into operation. Taken together, the developments paint a clear picture of the current space race. On one hand, SpaceX is pushing forward with rapid upgrades, new designs, and back-to-back -back flights. On the other hand, competitors are struggling to keep up with their own schedules. The unveiling of the V3 grid fins signals not just a technical shift, but also a symbolic one. SpaceX is preparing for the next stage of its program, while others are still trying to get their first missions off the ground. The months ahead will be decisive. Flight 10 will test the reliability of current hardware. Flight 11 could show if the cadence is sustainable. And Booster 18's debut will mark the true beginning of the V3 era. If all these milestones are met, 2025 could go down as the year Starship turned from an experimental program into a real workhorse. With everything we now know, the biggest question is whether SpaceX can hold this pace. Can they launch six times this year? Will the new catching fins perform as expected? And how soon will we see V3 in action? Each answer brings us closer to understanding whether Starship will truly revolutionize spaceflight or face another round of delays. For now, all eyes are on the launch pad, waiting for the next giant leap. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.